City. It's where Stewart Airport is located. Now, the men were arrested Wednesday evening. We are just learning about it. Authorities say they were planning to detonate a car with plastic explosives outside the temple. We're trying to get more details, and we're going to bring them to you when we do. The other breaking news story tonight, just hours after Democrats in Congress handed him a major defeat, blocking his plans to close Guantanamo and house detainees on American soil, it appears President Obama is upping the ante. CNN has learned that the first of 240 Gitmo detainees, this man, this accused terrorist, is coming to New York to face trial. His name is Ahmed Gilani, indicted by a federal grand jury more than a decade ago on charges that he took part in the 1998 al-Qaeda bombing or plot to bomb American embassies in Africa that killed more than 200 people in Kenya and Tanzania. He was finally captured five years ago, facing charges of war crimes. Let's get the latest now from Ed Henry of the White House. Ed. Well, Anderson, Galani is an al-Qaeda operative, and what's significant here uh, is he would be the first Guantanamo detainee that would be brought to U.S. soil uh, and tried in a civilian court instead of a military commission. So the administration being aggressive tonight about trying to get word that they're bringing some of these detainees to justice. Significance about being br uh, brought to New York City. As you mentioned, that's where he was indicted for these bombings of U.S. embassies uh, in Africa in 1998. We should point out over 200 people were killed in those attacks, including 12 12 Americans. The other significant part of this is New York City is a place that obviously has dealt with a lot of these uh, high-level detainees, high-profile terror cases. They could handle a detainee like this, uh, a hardened alleged criminal, uh, whereas a state like Nebraska, Illinois could not. Uh, this administration uh, taking uh, not just that vote in the Senate, but also today, the president's own FBI director, Robert Mueller, uh, dealt a blow to the president by telling Congress he's worried about putting some of these detainees in American prisons, in the American justice system. So there are a lot of problems for the administration on that front tonight, Anderson. The timing, though, of this is no coincidence. Well, obviously, as you mentioned, president takes it on the chin today, 90 to 6, uh, by the Senate, a Democratic-run Senate. Uh, clearly, this White House tonight wants to show, look, we're pushing to bring these detainees to justice. But the, also the significance uh, is that tomorrow the president is giving a major speech, not just on Guantanamo, but on interrogation policy, on why, uh, trying to explain why he's not releasing uh, those photos of prison abuse. So all of this coming out now, obviously can help bolster his case that he's trying to move these detainees to justice. But we should also point out that there's another big speech in Washington tomorrow. Former Vice President Dick Cheney, who's been attacking this administration left and right on all of these issues, giving a speech about a half hour after the president tomorrow right here in Washington. This battle is just beginning, Anderson. Ed, stay with us. We want to bring in senior political analyst David Gergen, also senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, who's written extensively about Guantanamo. David, let, let's talk about what happened on Capitol Hill today. How big of a blow to President Obama is this move by Congress, basically not allowing him to close down Guantanamo, not giving them the money to close it down, the $80 million or so it would cost, and saying that they can't bring the folks here. Well, it's significant in a couple of ways, Anderson. It's one of the first serious rebellions we've seen by the Democrats against the president since he took office. Uh, and secondly, it goes, it cuts cr directly counter to one of his major campaign uh, pledges, and that was to cut, uh, to close down Guantanamo and, and set up a new legal system for these people or put them into the, a more regular legal system. I must say, there, there is more than a whiff of hypocrisy uh, on the part of the Democrats on this. After all, they've been, ha they hammered away. At, at President George W. Bush for putting the detainees in Guantanamo, saying how unfair this was, the civil rights, how human rights abuses, and all the rest. Well, where did they? Who did they think was going to take responsibility for these detainees after Guantanamo was closed down? The Tooth Fairy? What were they thinking? Of course, they had to, some of them have to come to the United States to be tried. It's a, we're a responsible power. We have maximum security prisons to hold these people. It just seems to me there's a fecklessness about this. Uh, they're scoring political points, but at the expense of what I think is a blow to the president, an unnecessary blow. Jeff, in terms of Guantanamo, some 240 people there. Right now, what is going to happen to them? I and mean, if they can't be put in American prisons, this guy is now being brought to the United States. Are they, did they pick him because there's a solid case against him? Right. There, are, there is a group of the detainees who can be prosecuted in American courts. There's enough Just, evidence. There's enough evidence, like this fellow who's being brought over, and that's not particularly legally controversial. They'll get all the rights, they'll have a jury trial, they'll have lawyers. And then he would serve time in an American prison. If, if he's convicted. The really complicated group is the group which our people think are dangerous, 
but we don't have enough evidence to give them a regular American because trial. Because some of these folks are just rounded up by the Northern Alliance in Afghanistan, handed over to U.S. forces, put on this plane, and, and it's not really known exactly what they did. And hundreds have been through Guantanamo and already released. The government, even during the Bush administration, has tried to release some of the 240 who are there now, but they don't have a country who will take them. I mean, they don't think these people are dangerous. But there is a third category. The people who could be criminally prosecuted, that's not controversial. The people they're trying to send home, that's not controversial. The group is, what do you do with the people you think are dangerous, but you don't have enough evidence? That's where the military tribunals came from. These semi uh, regular trials where the defendants have some rights but not as many as in American courtrooms. The Supreme Court has rejected the Bush administration's plan. Obama criticized those plans. Now he's saying he wants to start up those systems again, but where's he going to do it? Because the Senate says he can't do it in the United States. He wants to close, close Guantanamo. That's the dilemma he faces right now. So, David Gergen, what's the solution? Uh, well, the president met with a group of human rights uh, 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 leaders this afternoon or during the day today, and the reports out tonight are that he's ruminating about a potential plan for preventive detention, uh, that is to keep uh, almost on an indefinite basis the very people that uh, Jeff just talked about. Those are considered uh, too dangerous to release, but you don't have enough evidence to take them to trial. You now, that's going to be very controversial. The human rights groups don't like it. You know, the president's a little box boxed in here, but I must say, if he shows, I think the solution for him is show fidelity to the Constitution, show fidelity to his original uh, campaign promises, and force the Democrats to say, look, okay, we've got to do this. If you're not going to keep them in Guantanamo, where are you going to put them? You've got to deal with some of them here in the United States. We just can't pass them off and ask Europe to take them, for goodness sakes. We're, not the, ones, we're the ones who started the war. We need to clean it up. And I think the Democrats are going to have to accept that responsibility. And, 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 go ahead, well, I, just, I just thought uh, Director Mueller's testimony was bizarre today. I mean, if there's one I thing the United States knows how to do, it's keep people in prison and out of trouble. The idea that they would be fundraising from prison, the idea that they would be targets of an attack, Come on, we know how to do this. We have supermax prisons. These are not, they're not going to escape. The, the idea that Mueller is saying it's somehow dangerous to keep them in the United States just seems against all w of what we know about how our prisons work. Ed, Ed, do we know what the White House is, I mean, what are their options? Well, we know that uh, we've just learned that the president tonight around 6 p.m. had one final meeting with his top aides, I'm told, here at the White House to try to go through all these options. And they realize there are no easy ones, as you've been hearing. And in fact, I asked Robert Gibbs that question at the briefing today. Are there any second thoughts about rushing through that executive order that first week here to sign it and say, look, we've got to close Guantanamo within one year and put that deadline? Would it have been smarter to say, look, we're going to study it, we're going to look at all these options, weigh them, uh, and then come back with an executive order in the spring or summer to close it down for another year. He said there are no second thoughts here, but I'm being told that they're still going through all these options. What the president's going to try to do tomorrow is not focus in on just Guantanamo. Instead, what top aides are saying is he's going to try to broaden it out, talk about interrogation policy, talk about those prison abuse photos, try to do what he did on the economy at the Georgetown University speech a few weeks ago, broaden this out, explain a bigger picture. But I'm not sure that some of his fellow Democrats on the Hill want to hear big picture. They want to hear the specifics about what you're going to do with these with these terrorists. And then a lot of them are saying, not in my backyard. Uh, Ed Henry, the White House, thank you. David Gergen and Jeff Tubin as well.